Hello and welcome to another Airbrush Asylum video. In this Airbrush Insight video, we're going to take a look at the Segola X-Tech 200 Gravity Feed Airbrush. So you can see that comes in a nice little box. On the back of the sleeve, we've got all the other models listed. So this particular brush is the X-Tech 200. It's got the smaller cup on the top and I'm testing the 0.2 mil needle. So let's go ahead and take it out of the package. Okay, you can see the brush here. Open that up. So same as the X-Tech 300. We've got the tool to remove the nozzle assembly the extra um, adapter for your hose so you can hook that onto the end of your airbrush and that can just tap into any hose that you've got and you've also got another one of those eye droppers so this is the airbrush here so nice looking brush not too heavy nice and lightweight again got the rubber protector cap which is really good it's definitely going to look after your um, crown cap and needle and everything or your head assembly especially if you drop it so if I would leave that on whenever you're not using it again you've got the red anodized handle and the crown cap is anodized now the trigger on this one concerns me a little bit because of the angle of it is very similar to the X-Tech 300 but there was enough of a gap between the trigger and the cup whereas this one you can see there isn't a lot of room there so when I put my finger over it the top of my finger is actually touching the cup so I will be doing an artwork using all of these brushes um, I've got three Segola airbrushes to test so I suppose once I spend a bit more time on the artwork I'll get a better feeling of whether or not um, that's comfortable for me to airbrush but that's that's the first probably the thing that would alarm me um, Apart from that, the trigger action feels extremely smooth again. It still feels like a nice, lightweight, quality airbrush. You've got a decent amount of um, area there for a little bit of paint. So this is obviously more of an illustration airbrush. So something with a bit finer detail. You could also use it for automotive and just do real fine stuff with it. So let's go ahead. I'm going to put some uh, reduced... Uh, water-based paint in there just to run that and test it and um, and then yeah we'll see how it runs and give it a bit of a, a go so we'll just hook that up and let's see we've got air on so I'll test it with the crown cap on and then I'll take the crown cap off Again, these airbrushes are brand new, so I was lucky enough to have them sent over for me to test from Segola. They're based in Spain, so we just want to give them a bit of a go, and I've got to give them some feedback, so I'm just going to add some paint into that now. Okay, so we've got paint all loaded up in there. We're going to go ahead and give it a spray. So a nice smooth action. Again, pretty good. You know, much the same as the 300 that I tested. My finger is hitting that cup, which is a little bit annoying, but. Keeping a nice consistent flow. Getting a little bit of a blockage there. So I'm just going to blast that out. And get right back to it.
far as the control is concerned, it's really easy to use, comfortable to use. Just trying to readjust my finger here. Don't know how that would fit best. Like I said, I really need to, I've just, this is the first time I'm using it, so I really need to spray at a longer time frame to see how I like it. A bit of a blockage. It is a finer needle so it's going to block up a little bit more than the um, 300 wood. So I might need to thin the paint out a bit more which I'm, I'll do that now. Okay, we'll do a bit of finer detail. Gapping a little bit but that just could be that it needs to be worn in a little bit more. I find that most airbrushes when they're brand new tend to need a little like a few hours to really get everything working nicely and make sure that all the parts are worn in a little bit so they paint a bit smoother. I can see it's really trying to do like it's got the capability to do the fine detail and just not getting it without a broken dotted line. So what I'm going to do is I'll remove this front air cap, just the crown cap, we'll just take that off and I'll paint with just the needle exposed which usually gives you a chance to spray a bit finer. getting some reasonable detail out of this but I'm still finding out of this and the X-Tech 300 I think I prefer the 300 but then I don't really use these illustration brushes as much I've got a couple of um, side feed ones but I have a lot more of the uh, gravity cup air brushes still spraying nice and smooth and there we go, we're starting to get it finer now. So it just seems to be that it needs a bit more, a few more hours under its belt and I think it'll really start to rip out some consistent fine detail. You can see it's definitely doing a fine line and it can do fine dots and everything but I'm finding that it's still occasionally gapping the line. It's definitely getting better now. So quite a nice smooth action. It's just my only concern is really the um, just that trigger. I think that if that was a bit further back I think it would make such a nicer airbrush. I think because that is so close to that cup and you've got your finger there it's kind of a bit awkward um, unless you know your, your fingers are that small but I've got reasonably small fingers anyway and they still 
it's sort of it's just too close so that's probably my only feedback with this one um, the XTEC 300 was perfect even though your finger was close that was fine it didn't interfere but if that could be um, amended I think this would be such well, this would be a lot better brush make a big difference especially if you're airbrushing for hours and hours it's kind of a bit awkward to have it have your finger almost sitting inside the paint cup. Apart from that, it looks great. It feels comfortable. Smooth trigger action. Um, nice lightweight gun. So paints without the air cap, which is always a good thing. So you've got that option. You don't need to go and buy another air cap. Um, it also paints reasonably well with the crown cap on. So. Yeah, so I think uh, that's a good little test for the uh, XTEC 200 with the 0.2mm needle. Okay, let's take a closer look at the Segola XTEC 200 gravity feed airbrush. So you can see the protector cap on the front, which is really cool. It's got the, um, the signature crown cap, the Segola engraved lettering, as well as on the rear of the handle here in the anodized sort of red look, which is pretty cool. Okay, let's... Let's pull it apart and take a closer look. So first thing we'll do is we'll unscrew the handle, remove the locking nut, pull out the needle, unscrew this, You can see part of the rocker assembly there and the spring. So that can all come apart. And then now the trigger should come out. Here's the trigger. Whoop. Pop that up there. And we've got this section of the rocker assembly as well, which is loose. So with some other models, they're attached to the trigger. So in this case, it's loose. You can see decent quality. We've got the plunger assembly there, which we'll remove now. So I'll just use a pair of tweezers and get into that section there. Carefully remove that and be, just be careful when you do undo it because there's a small spring in there that will want to fly out. This one here. So that's what a lot of people change when, um, if you read about soft springs and that. And you've got your plunger assembly as well, which is just there. So that's all been removed now. Let's go ahead and take the front apart. So we'll remove the crown cap and the front air cap assembly. You can leave that together like that. I showed you before that you can remove that red anodized crown cap separately and keep painting so we need to undo this now so we need to use the tool that comes with the airbrush fit that on there unscrew this and that'll just screw off exposing the nozzle which is you can see there a cone nozzle so reasonably large but you can see it's it's almost well it's got that little finer section at the front with a Teflon um, seal there as well which is good and you can see the two air holes there so let's go ahead and put it all back together again so we'll Firstly, start with the front, screw the head assembly back together, 
grab our little tool, tighten that up. With airbrushes, don't over tighten things, but you want to give it, you want to make it snug so there's no air leaks. But especially with um, other brands where you've got a thread on the little nozzle, you don't want to strip that. So be very careful. So we've refitted our head assembly. So tackle the plunger assembly, stick that back in there. Then a little spring. And this little piece, which is tricky. So we'll grab our tweezers again. And you can see there's, it's got a slight thread on there. I don't know if you can see that on the video. So what we want to do is line that up, that hole, push. Oh, it's, it's a tricky one, but you've got to push that down far enough so that we hit the threaded section and then start tightening that up like that until it won't go any further. And there you go. That's in. Next step, we get our trigger. Now with the notch, that little notch there needs to go towards the back of the airbrush. So we, a little crossbar, we put that in line and then twist once it's in. You can see we've got action already. And then we get this part of the rocker assembly. It needs to go this way. Okay, it needs to sit like that. So again, put it in sideways and twist. There we go, make sure that's sitting like that. I tend to lean the airbrush down now so that we don't drop that back out. You can see this is only gonna go one way. So we fit that in, turn it around until it slides through and butts up against the rocker assembly. And then attach our spring and seal it all up. Tighten that. All right, once that's done, put our locking nut back on there. Don't need to fully tighten it because we want to be able to fit the needle back in. So this is a 0.2 mil needle. See there how fine it is. So we'll just reinsert that. Again, don't press down too hard. Like don't jam it through. You don't want to damage your nozzle. And then we tighten this up and make sure that this is tight so that when we pull the needle back, uh, when we pull the trigger back, the needle will move with that. Then we get the handle, screw that back on, and she's all back together again. Now, this was cleaned out prior, so what you want to do when you're cleaning, you tip your paint back into your cup or your bottle, whatever you're using, or a mixing bottle, and then flush whatever thinners you're using, or if it's water-based paint, just a water or airbrush cleaner through there till it runs clear. Once that's happened, unscrew the handle, loosen the nut, and then pull the needle out, and make sure that you flush through the back here. A lot of people don't do that. What happens is paint can dry up on the end of your needle and start to block up and seize that. So always important to flush through the back as well. All right, we'll just reinsert that now. And a good way to check it too is put the needle back in and if you think it's clean, pull it out and wipe it on your skin. You can see there, that's not clean. So I didn't do a very good job. All right, so I need to flush back through there again before I start painting with a different color. So there you have it. Just put that handle back on and that's at least given you a bit of a quick look at the Segola X-Tech 200 Gravity Feed Airbrush. Until next time, feel free to check out any of our other videos and thanks again for watching. We do really appreciate it. In the meantime, if you haven't already, feel free to hit subscribe. We have plenty of step-by-step -step tutorials, quick tips, airbrush insights, showcase, live streams, and much more. You can also visit our website at airbrushasylum.com.au. Thanks for watching.